Well, I thought I'd make you a new little video today on this Actia Dash. I didn't know if you knew this or not, but it has its own built-in diagnostics. And so I was going to show you a little bit how to get into it. You stand here on your, because you have your trip button and your mode button. So if you push on your mode button, hold it there for about five seconds. After five seconds, you just let go. And there it goes. That gets it in here. I'm trying to zoom in a little bit so you can see. There's your contrast. So you, you can just again push your, your mode your trip and mode buttons up and down to change the contrast. So I'm trying to get it where you can see both. Alright, a little bit more. Alright, and hit the mode button and you can go out to something else here. You can come on, baby. Oh, I know what I'm doing. I'm mucking with you. See, I'm changing a contrast. So to get out of it, I push and hold. No, I think I just leave it alone. Wait for it. Wait for it. That went okay. Now I'm out of it. Restore defaults. Don't need to do that. Software version. So, um, there's software version. And it pops up, gives me a number. Yours may differ. And, um, here's my part number. And engine hours. That's interesting. Didn't know it had that. 1,532 hours. And this is a 2005. Okay, what else we got here? Maximum engine RPM. That scared me. 4,488 RPMs. I don't think that was me. I would never intentionally do that. I think maybe the previous owner did that. That's scary RPMs. Don't like that. Um, maximum engine speed. Yeah, that was probably me going downhill. And normally, you know, normally 65 is plenty, but some point in time I got going fast. Where are we going here? What's the next button? Engine oil life. Six percent. And I think if, I'm, if I remember right, you pump the gas pedal key on gas pedal five or six times real quick and it resets it to hundred percent. I believe that's how that works. Uh cluster diagnostics. Gauge test. That's pretty cool. Let's see. So just in case you had a something not working and you're trying to determine okay is it the cluster or is it an input problem so this will tell you that at least you know your stepper motors are working fine in the cluster but if you know you if you don't have if you're not not getting any rpms or speed or anything that's got to be a sensor somewhere else not actually in the cluster so that's a cool little, little test to know that that's there so there's going to fuel and that's going to hit the temperature gauge, that useless temperature gauge of ours. Yeah, there it goes. 50%, 100%. All right, what other buttons can I push? Okay, we got a warning light test. Okay, let me zoom back a little bit so you can see more. Okay, there we go. So it works its way around. Auto park, there's the ABS. Tire, I've never, I don't think we have that option in the workhorse. Uh, of course, that is a check transmission. You don't want to see that. Cruise control. Brake. Brake is on. Auto brake off. Then we're going to get to our high beams. And left turn, right turn. And by the way, these aren't bulbs. They're like little LEDs on the back side. And then we're charge indicator. Works oil light. I want to make sure that's working. Daytime driving lights. And then it's going to seat belt light. Service engine light. Checks it. And then what else? We got range. That's another transmission issue. That's what that is. High idle. I've never seen that. I don't, don't think that would apply. 
Overdrive on and off, yeah, we use that. Or at least my gasser does. Okay, great break on. All right, so that does that. All right, what else we got? Push more buttons. So, okay, but then we got the LCD test. Okay, so that just flickers back and forth. Shows you the, uh, that the LCD is working correctly. All right. What else we got? Backlighting test. Okay, so it's going to light it up. Okay, so there's 50%. 100%. So we know that works. Okay. And what else? We got speaker test. Okay, we know the speaker works. And switch inputs. I really don't know what this is about. Um, the switch inputs. T to scroll. Daylight, buzzer call, a lot of stuff is off. Check tires is off. Okay, auto park is on. Service is on. Park light off, left turn. Hmm, that's kind of weird. It says these right turn, left turns off, but they actually work. So I have to research a little bit more about what, what this is for. Or maybe, maybe it's not even changeable. Maybe it's just telling you what. We've got analog inputs. Dimmer, ignition. Let me zoom in a little bit more so you can see if that see better. Frequency inputs. Mm. This is probably used in some other diagnostic stuff. So, anyway, that kind of gives you an idea what you can do with it. Uh, in fact, I know mine is working properly because I just got it back from Brazzles. I had uh, this, the, the LCD kind of washed out to it, had a washed out look. And it wasn't the LCD screen, but it was a bad transistor, which I guess causes low voltage, kind of freaks it out. So while he had it, he up updated the software. He uh, put in a new speaker for me. Of course, changed out the transistor. And I think there's something about the software when they update it. You know, if, if you've been around these workhorses long, maybe... Once in a blue moon, you'll see all your gauges. You may be driving down the road, and all the gauges just kind of freak out, go all the way up, all the way down, and they just kind of reset themselves at random times and kind of freak you out if you've never seen it before. And I think with the software update, uh, takes care of that, so that won't happen anymore. I think I've seen it happen about twice with me over the last 10 years or so. I'm not sure how many miles it does it, but it does. But anyway, that's my little video for the day. Hope you found it interesting. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.